Hello. So in this episode of Writing Notes, I'm going to give you a very basic introduction to using the library databases to do scholarly research. Now, I'm on the Penn State Libraries page because I teach at Penn State. Um, if you're watching this on my YouTube channel and you are not at Penn State or not a Penn, or not a Penn State affiliated person, uh, some of this may be useful, but some of this is going to be Penn State specific. So that's uh, something to be aware of. Now, the first thing I want to show you about Penn State's library is this research guides section, specifically the course guides. So I'm going to open that up over here. We'll come back to the base, uh, the library homepage later on. Um, under University Park, which is where I teach, uh, we've got a number of course guides. So different uh, different courses, uh, what, the, what the library has done is pull together sources that they think are going to be particularly useful for people in that class. So I'm going to go to the English 15 Rhetoric and Composition course guide and just show you around this a little bit. Um, it's not that difficult to navigate necessarily. Um, so the basic thing, Lion Search, we'll come back and we'll actually uh, sort of work through the find box here on the, the library webpage. But Lion Search is a basic way to uh, access university uh, resources, whether that's books, whether that's databases, etc., uh, etc. Et then they've got some different databases that they think are going to be useful for English 15 students. CQ Researcher, uh, this gives a broad overviews of particular topics. Um, Opposing Viewpoints gives uh, agreements and disagreements on issues. Um, Access World News is news. Um, they've got citation guides here. So that's one thing that you can use that's really useful. Um, so if you're doing APA for, say, a social sciences course or something like that, if you're doing MLA for uh, an English course, um, I've also got a video on citations in MLA format. You can check that out as well. Um, but that's one thing that you can do. Uh, that's one, th one source that you have here. Uh, that's going to be really useful. Um, so before I talk through uh, using the, the find option, the other thing I do want to point you to is this ask a librarian option. Uh, so oftentimes they're available for live chat, but it really depends on what time of day. Like I think in the middle of the night, nobody is available for live chat. So you can send them an email when they're not available. But if you're having trouble finding a source or figuring out how a research source works or something like that, this can be a really useful tool. Now, I want to take us through, um, actually, I'm first going to just open this up in another page because I want to go to that later. But let's say you're interested in a specific topic. So let's say you're concerned with environmental protection. Just arbitrarily. We'll put that in. We'll see what comes up. Because what this is going to do, this search box He's going to search everything that the Penn State Libraries has access to. So it's got journal articles and books and media, news and magazine articles, their website, which is Penn State website, I think. Um, and so you've got this broken up into sort of broad categories or broad genres. Now, I want to pull out just a couple of these things and, and sort of show you around here. Um, so I'm going to pull out journal articles and books and media because these are the two most scholarly 
of these options. Um, eventually this will load. So this should take us to journal articles. So these would, for the most part, be peer-reviewed academic sources, which means they're going to be pretty reliable in terms of the evidence that they're providing. And so when you're trying to figure out if a particular source is going to be useful, there's a number of things you want to be thinking about. Obviously, one of the most useful things is the title. So in this case, the first entry is Two Decades of Enhancing Children's Environmental Health Protection as the U.S. Environmental Protect something. Probably U.S. Environmental Protection Agency. So that title is going to help you figure out how useful this is likely to be because the title is going to tell you something about the content of the article. Another thing that you may look at is the name or, or names of the authors. If you know a lot about the, the research field that you're looking at, this may be useful. If you know, if you're going to recognize the names of people who are particularly reliable or knowledgeable in this field, that's something that's going to be a good option for you. Uh, if, you're if you're just starting out researching on this field and you don't know who the big names are, this may not be as useful. Another thing that, that you want to be thinking about no, I don't want to chat with you, uh, is the title of the source itself. And that's usually going to be located right here. So that can be a magazine or a journal title, or uh, the other thing we have here is book chapters. So this may be the title of a book. Um, and then the, the other thing that you want to look at in terms of this very basic introductory information here is when it was published. So generally you want things that are published more recently, although that's more important in some disciplines than others. So the sciences, you generally want the most up-to-date information, whereas the arts and humanities, it may be less significant. And then the other good thing here is that the library will tell you whether the full text is available online, uh, whether you can download it as a PDF or get the full text online, or whether you don't have access to it, which does occasionally happen, especially with book chapters. And I'm not seeing any of any on there right now. Um, but sometimes what you'll get is something that just says citation online, which means you don't have access to it through the library. So let's go ahead and open this up. We're just taking this first one because I'm not really assessing. Uh, how useful this is. So then you'll get to the actual page where this article is available. And there's a lot of variations here. Uh, I mean, this one is through PMC, the U.S. National Library of Medicine, National Institutes of Health. Um, but there's a lot of different... Uh, I'm not going to go back to that databases thing. But there's a lot of different we, there's a lot of different things that you may see here. So let's uh, open up another one just so you can get another visual of this, hopefully coming from a different place so this will look different. Um, slowly but surely my computer will get there. Yeah, so I mean this one again looks different, but what you've got here is a lot of crucial information. So all of the information that you would need to cite this article or to cite this article is available here. So in this case, the title, the authors, all the authors, because there's a lot of them for this one, the journal name, volume and issue number, the date of publication, the page range, and then the DOI. And again, I've done a video on MLA format, so um, you can check that out, and that will give you a lot more information. Now, once you've gotten into here, there's a couple of things that you want to look at that are going to be super, super useful research tools. 
if there is a summary or more often an abstract you want to read that because an abstract or a summary is going to give you the key pieces of information that you need uh, is going to give you the key pieces of information the key ideas that this article or this book chapter or whatever it is is going to be talking about so that helps you decide whether or not this is going to be a useful article for your research purposes same thing here with the summary. The other thing that you want to look at when you found an article that you think is going to be good is you want to look for something like a PDF option. So that one there, uh, and we've got PDF right here. So a lot of databases are going to have very easily downloadable PDFs. And there's a couple of reasons you want to download something as a PDF. One is so that you can save it you can make comments on it and you don't have to try and find it again through the library databases because for whatever reason sometimes things are hard to find a second time. Now one thing you do want to um, one thing you do want to make sure you're doing when you pull up a PDF is you want to make sure that all of the information you need to cite it is on that PDF. So in this case we've got the title, we've got the DOI, uh, digital object identifier, we've got volume and issue number, we've got publication date, we've got the title of the journal, and we've got the page numbers. So we can get the page range. In this case we've got again title, authors, uh, journal name, volume and issue number. So in this case that's presented uh, as 169 parentheses two close parentheses so that's volume and issue number year of publication page range and DOI so these two PDFs have everything that we need to know to cite these sources so that's really useful uh, in terms of, of saving these PDFs and being able to cite them later now uh, this is the book catalog so if we went back this is books and media um, the same thing basically works here. Um, yeah, okay. So um, one thing that, so again, you've got titles, you've got authors, things like this. Um, one thing Penn State does have a pretty decent list of his ebooks, which I'm not seeing right at the moment. Um, and actually, maybe we'll go back to the library page briefly for that. Um, but let's say you wanted this book. So, what you can do, so this again gives you all of the information that you need to cite this. Um, the full text is actually available online, so that's really useful for you. That's not always the case. Um, but da, 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 somewhere, okay, let's try this one. Uh, somewhere they used to have a I want it option where the librarians would actually go and get it off the physical shelf for you. Uh, they don't seem to have that anymore. So uh, we'll move on from that and I'm gonna I'm gonna show you the other good option you have um, in terms of finding ebooks. And that the library has access to a few different ebook uh, collections but ebook central this is probably the most useful one so the way I got to that you go to the library homepage to the find option and select databases and click on E and you can go to any database so if you wanted project muse you could go to it through that if you want a J store you can get through J, get to it through J academic search complete whatever it is 
Um, but this is a really useful ebook collection. Um, and so if we say uh, environmental protection, let's say we, we were interested in this one, da, 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 fostering uh, industry initiated environmental protection efforts. Again, you've got all the information that you need to cite it available here. You can read it online, you can download the book. Um, different books have uh, different availability in terms of how much of them you can download. Um, you can download individual chapters, or you can add this to your bookshelf. So up here, if you, you, can, say, you can go back to your bookshelf and, and save books to come back to and read them later. Um, so this is again a really useful tool and you can go through the chapters and read individual chapters or individual sections or whatever it is. So ProQuest eBook Central is another really useful resource that you have through the libraries for doing scholarly research.